Have a nice flight, sir. Oh, I'm counting on it. Fly, huh? Excuse me, I've got to stretch my legs. Hey guys, welcome back to the English Fluency Mission, where you learn English with movies and TV show scenes. This is Steve, your American English Fluency Coach, and today we are going to make you learn English vocabulary and a few idioms along with a connected speech through a ghost show named, Supernatural. This is a horrible show, where you will see, how Dean and Sam drive out the demon out of a human. So without further ado, let's jump into the topic. I don't understand. I already spoke with Homeland Security. Right. Some new information has come up, so if you could just answer a couple questions. Just before the plane went down, did you notice anything unusual? Like what? Strange lights, uh, weird noises, maybe. Voices. So, every religion and every world culture has the concept of demons and demonic possession, right? I mean, Christian, Native American, Hindu, you name it. Yeah, but none of them describe anything like this. Well, that's not exactly true. You see, according to Japanese belief, certain demons are behind certain disasters, both natural and man-made. One causes earthquakes, another causes disease. And this one causes plane crashes? <sighs> All right, so what, we have a demon that's evolved with the times and found a way to ratchet up the body count? Yeah. And you know... Who knows how many planes it's brought down before this one. You're holding Metallica. It calms me down. <laughs> Look, man, I get you nervous, all right, but you gotta stay focused. Okay. I mean, we got 32 minutes and counting to track this thing down, or whoever it's possessing anyway, and perform a full-on exorcism. Yeah, on a crowded plane, that's gonna be easy. Just take it one step at a time, all right? Now. Oh, man, don't do that. Anything? No, nothing. How much time we got? Fifteen minutes. Maybe we missed somebody. Maybe the thing's just not on the plane. You believe that? Well, I will if you will. Now, what's the problem? doing? You said you were just going to talk to him. We are going to talk to him. <laughs> Look, we need you calm. We need no, you. Wait, I don't we need you outside of the curtain. I, uh, don't let anybody in, okay? Can you do that? I, Can you do that? Amanda. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 
Hurry up, Sam. I don't know how much longer I can hold. Regna Terra. Cantate Deo. Solite Domino. Qui behitor per celus, celus antiquos. And you should take with him the day. I know what happened to your girlfriend. She must have died screaming. Even now she's burned. Sam! Aeus is Aeus. That's what turned to your Aeus. And there we go. I got him. Have a nice flight, sir. Oh, I'm counting on it. Count on is a phrasal verb that means to put one's trust in someone or something, to do something, or to be confident that you can depend on someone. Examples. You can always count on Michael in a crisis. Means, you can trust Michael. Next. I can count on my parents to help me. Last, we're counting on you to handle this problem, Janet. Means, we are trusting you. Excuse me, uh, do you know how long we've been up? Oh, uh, about 40 minutes. Wow, time really does fly, huh? Excuse me, I've got to stretch my legs. Stretch one's legs is an idiom. If you stretch your legs, you stand or go for a short walk, usually after you have been sitting down for a long time. Examples. I stopped at the square and got out to stretch my legs. Means, I stopped at the square and got out for a short walk. Next. Let's stop off at this rest area for a while. After three hours of driving, I'm sure everyone would like to stretch their legs a bit. Right. Some new information has come up, so if you could just answer a couple questions. Just before the plane went down, did you notice anything unusual? This is an example of connected speech that how natives connect and link the words. Generally, the words like, are, do, did are reduced and linked with another word. So here, the example of this is did you, which turns into, did you. Watch another example clip. What did you really expect? What did you really expect? What did you really expect? Wait, what, what are you doing? You said you were just going to talk to him. The we next example is what are you, which turns into what are you? So the question is what are you going to do? So the question is what are you going to do? So the question is what are you going to do? Wait, what, what are you doing? You said you were just going to talk to him. We are going to talk to you. All right, so what? We have a demon that's evolved with the times and found a way to ratchet up the body count? Evolve as a verb means, to develop gradually, or to make someone or something change and develop gradually. Examples. Did humans evolve from apes? Next. The company has evolved over the years into a multi-million dollar organization. Last. Most countries are evolving toward more democratic societies. Alright, so what, we have a demon that's evolved with the times and found a way to ratchet up the body count? Yeah. Ratchet up as a phrasal verb means, to increase something in controlled stages, over a period of time. Examples. He fears inflation will ratchet up as the year ends. Means, inflation will increase. Next. Audiences' expectations are ratcheted up as they are exposed to high-budget productions. Means, audience expectations are increased. Next. The demon has found a way to ratchet up the body count. Here. Body count means the number of people killed. So this means, the demon has found a way to increase the killings of people. You're holding Metallica. Calms me down. <laughs> Look man, I get you nervous, alright, but you gotta stay focused. Okay, I mean, we got, 
32 minutes and counting to track this thing down, or whoever it's possessing anyway, and perform a full-on exorcism. Yeah, on a crowded plane, that's gonna be easy. Just take it one step at a time, all right? Now. Exorcism as a noun, is the removal of evil spirits from a person or place by the use of prayer. Examples. The exorcism was broadcast on television. Synonyms of exorcism are, driving out, cleansing, expulsion, purification etc. Next. A hundred million people believe in the magic power of exorcism. What? What is it? Cristo. Must have is a modal verb. We use must have with verb third when we talk about a strong possibility based on facts referring to the past. Many think that must have with verb third has the same meaning as should have with verb third, but it's not the same. Look at examples for better understanding. I saw Cynthia crying a few minutes ago. She must have heard the bad news. Here is the strong possibility of the past about Cynthia hearing the bad news, that's why she was crying. So for the strong possibility that we feel for the past, we use must have. Another example. One friend asks the other, do you know where Martin is? Then he replies, I haven't seen him, but I'm sure he must have left the office as it's 5 o'clock already. Watch the clip again. I know what happened to your girlfriend. He must have died screaming. Even now she's burned. The demon said, she must have died screaming. Here, he is showing a strong possibility of his girlfriend's death, which was shown in the first episode of this show. Means, he is damn sure about it, so he said, she must have died screaming. Last example with a negative sentence. She mustn't have arrived early, or else she would have called us. Some people apply not after have, but that's not correct. Not will be between must and have always. Mustn't is the short form for saying must not. Sam! Ah! 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 Ah!